Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Victory Small Group session. We're so glad that you're in group. So glad that you've yes. taken heed to the call of getting connected. If you're new, so glad you did that, yes, man. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're not new, I'm glad that you've stuck in with small group. Mm -hmm. Won't you make some noise for your small group leader real quick? Say, make some noise, man, for your small group leader and your small group, yeah, man. Yeah, we, we thank you for sticking it yeah. out and being there for all of those who are part of Victory, yes. and those who aren't a part of Victory that come and attend our, our groups as well. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for as you know, we always Especially during this difficult yeah. time that we've had this past yes. year. Thank you. And that is why we say that the small group leaders are the rock stars yes. of our church, man, because they walk with the body. And yes. so, very good. Well, let's jump in, make good use of our time. Yes. We've been in a series entitled Four to Five Relationships, mm -hmm. and it's been really good. There's been a lot of people that have been turning around and talking about how this series has really helped them. Mm -hmm. It's really helped them and, you know, challenged them to mm -hmm. rethink how they deal with people. Yeah. And that's what God said. This whole series was about us being mindful of how we deal with people and that we rally together during this time, not be used by the enemy to divide ourselves and isolate. And so our definition for fortifying relationships, if you don't remember, was simply this. What was that? We said that it was to activate the principles of God so that we can rebound and excel even after encountering adversity to maximize relationships in our lives to the glory of God. So this, this is all about not so much when relationships are going good, mm -hmm. but when relationships go sour, mm -hmm. when relationships go bad. And every relationship <laughs> that there's intimacy is going to have challenges. Yeah, and I, I think especially too in your family relationships, yeah. especially at this year of COVID when we've kind of been forced to be around each other yeah. even more, yeah. it kind of can bring out sometimes some adversity. So you really got to take these principles and make sure you apply them yes. so that you can truly take the time to fortify those relationships relationships as well. And it, yeah, and it's it's about that not not if we hit problems with each other, when. Yes. When we hit problems, there are principles of God that we have to be committed to use that allow us to not only rebound but maximize the relationship. And so that caused us to start talking about this, you know, co you know, how to fix a relationship in crisis. Yes. When a relationship is in crisis, how do you fix it? And we found out that there has to be this kingdom commitment. Yes. This commitment to the things of God. And so mm -hmm. we gave a definition, may not come up on the screen, but the definition for commitment was what? What was that? We said that it's the anchoring resolve to focus on the kingdom principles, not flesh. Not principles. fleshy stuff. Yes. And the kingdom promises that will bring the supernatural results that we hope for. So a kingdom commitment is all about, man, this resolve to focus on kingdom principles. Mm -hmm. Now, don't let's don't get it twisted, sister. When you have a problem <laughs> with somebody, your flesh is, is talking. Your flesh is talking. Your flesh is saying all types of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. But there is this commitment that yeah. I'm going to focus on the things of God, the principles of God, that instead of slapping the person, I want to resolve stuff with people. Well, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness. Yeah. And the things that you would like to have happen many times are then added unto you. Yes, yes. So we began to look at, you know, mm -hmm. number one, the dynamics of a kingdom commitment. Yes. That what does a kingdom commitment look like? You know, yeah. what does it cause? When there's a commitment, you know, when there's a, a, a commitment to resolve mm -hmm. the crisis, mm -hmm. it creates this certain environment. We yes. covered a lot of things in scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, it creates this environment and there's these manifestations from this dynamic to a kingdom commitment to a relationship in crisis. Remember, the crisis doesn't cancel the relationship. The crisis means the relationship needs some extra attention to resolve the crisis yes. of the relationship. I think you have to expect, you know, adversity because whenever yeah. there's intimacy, intimacy um, breeds confrontation. Yeah. So yeah. there's going to be confrontation with anybody that you're are, you're close with. Right. So you got to expect it and learn how to manage it properly. You know, I think even in our marriage, people look at us and they think, you know, man, they have a great marriage. I wish my marriage could be like the, your mm -hmm. like theirs. But we got issues. We, we, you know, our relationship, yes, it's great, but it, that doesn't mean it's problem free. But what makes it great is that we're willing to work the principles. Yes. When the issues um, happen. Yes. And not, it, not, not if, <laughs> when they happen. Because yes. do I work your nerve? Oh, gosh, yes. Did y'all hear that? You hear that? Oh, gosh, yes. Do you work my nerve? Yes, but not as much. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the reason is because we're so polar opposites. We're yes. so opposite from one yes. another. And it's just like sometimes it's just like, ah. <laughs> but I li- what what also works my nerves are the very things that I love about him as well. Yeah. But sometimes, you know how like, you always say there's a time and a season for everything. Yes. And sometimes what I love about him, the things that he may ask or, or, or do may not be the right time. Or you love season. it, but you hate and it. So like, <laughs> you love it, but you don't like it. Yes. You know, but, yes. you know, I, you can't just, you know, haul off and just like, you know, well, what do you want? Or, you right. know, it's the good and the bad. Gotta, the gotta, good and the bad. Yeah, you got you to gotta deal with it, yeah. everything in love. So we looked at the dynamics of a kingdom commitment to a mm-hmm. crisis relationship, but then we also looked at the discipline. Yes. For, a, you know, the discipline to a king to kingdom commitments for relationship in crisis. And the reason why that's important, the discipline is important, is we found out that when you make a commitment for the things of God, the enemy begins to work overtime coming up with this strategy yes. to get us in dissatisfaction. We get dissatisfied, man, with it. We become distracted and we get dissatisfied with what's going on. So in other words, you know, there has to be this discipline because, man, I'm the person is acting a fool. I'm trying to resolve it. They're giving me a hard time. But there's this discipline to the kingdom of God, to use kingdom principles to resolve the relationship, because I'm not doing it unto the person. I'm doing it unto the Lord. And I think that's key. You're not doing it unto the person, but you're doing it unto the Lord. And that's what helps you to be disciplined and to be committed. That is the key, is that you're not doing it unto the person. You're doing it unto the Lord. Because if you're doing it unto the person, then when that person does work your last They don't deserve it. I'm done. And you be like, hey, forget it. I'm done. But your love for God, your commitment to God mm-hmm. is what causes you to be disciplined, to do what you know to do, even when you don't feel like yeah. it. Yeah. So there's the dynamics of the kingdom mm-hmm. commitment. There's the discipline for to the kingdom commitment. Then we looked at the demonstration. Yes. That is not enough to say I have a kingdom commitment. There is a demonstration that when you are committed from the kingdom perspective to resolve crisis, there's certain things you do. Why? Because faith without works is what? Dead. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, if you're committed to resolving crisis kingdom style, we should see it. Yes. There's a demonstration. Mm-hmm. And so we went through a lot of things there. If you weren't, if you didn't hear these messages, you should go back and check them out because they're really good. But then finally we dealt with about communication in crisis, mm-hmm. crisis communication. And crisis communication is all about properly communicating when there's a crisis and what we say and what we don't say. <laughs> and it's interesting because that is so important because that is the number one issue or problems of why problems happen in relationships yeah. is because of lack, lack of, of communication, communication, of good communication, of good communication yeah. or handling it properly. Yeah, because it's the yeah. number one reason for divorce. Yeah. And marriages. As yeah. Well. Because we saw in, when we looked in this lesson, there's positive communication and mm-hmm. there's negative communication, you know, positive communication is I'm committed, just an example, I'm committed to resolve it. Yes. I'm committed to resolve it, not expand the crisis, resolve the crisis. That's an example of positive communication. But what we also looked at is when I'm not committed to positive communication, it results in poor communication. Yes. And poor communication has consequences. Yes. Poor communication turns around man, and causes things to not go resolved. They yes. go unresolved. And people hold things in and we disconnect from each other, you know, mentally and emotionally. And so now relationships Remember, every relationship God has put together for purpose of some sort. And when we are not committed to resolve things, it breaks us from that pursuit of purpose based upon the relationship. And we have to understand that no matter what, eventually you're going to eat the fruit of yes, what it is so that good. you end up doing yeah you may feel good to give a piece person a piece of your mind at the yeah. time it may feel good or get it off your chest or, or to get off your chest it may feel good not to say anything you know or to hold stuff in just for that moment but believe me it's just a matter of time before you're going to reap the fruit which yeah. is not good fruit yeah. if you do those very things i think we said stuff that people hold inside they don't get mm-hmm. out that stuff inside becomes sticky yeah. Come sticky because now you start other stuff starts sticking to that other things other instance and now you hold it in and then all of a sudden like a boiling pot that you don't turn off explodes. I'm gonna be honest with you. One of the things Are that you, so you're you're not honest sometimes? That was you. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, see that's one of the things. Yeah. <laughs> but no, really, there was a time where I would possibly hold back. There was a t- hold back on different things or, yeah. or not maybe say how I felt like me, even in, in love or I just said, well, I'm not going to say this or I'm not, you know, but when I really started saying, you know what, 
I'm going to do this. Even though I didn't feel like doing yeah. it, when I did it, I felt so much better That's on the point. inside. Yeah. Even though I didn't feel like doing it at the moment, right. but once I did it, once yeah. I d did what I knew to do, even yeah. though I didn't feel like it at the moment, I'm telling you, the liberation is so freeing yeah. that then it made me continue to want to always make sure no matter what. Yeah. And then it just becomes a habit after a while. And I think the point of that, which is really good, is when you, you're you faced with the option to either resolve something or not, not resolving it, you know, and not getting sharing mm -hmm. how you feel, it puts you in a bondage moment. Yeah. But obedience to do the things of God puts you in a liberation obedience moment. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. So this is really good. Man, covered a lot of stuff, man. Yes. And really, we've heard a lot of great things from people on this. So take this series. If you haven't listened, go back and listen to it, man. There's a lot of meaty stuff in here on yes. how to handle relationships, fortify them, and resolve crisis relationships. Amen. So right, let's give you a couple questions that we're going to ask for today. Just some dialogue. We need transparency here. Everybody to share. So you're going to read the questions. First one, yeah. number one. On a scale from one to ten, how would you rate your commitment to resolve relationships in your life that enter into crisis? Yeah, and why? Okay, so on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate? Are you know is one being low, ten being mm -hmm. high? Your commitment to resolve relationships in your life that enter crisis. If you go, I'm a ten. You need to tell us why. You need to tell us why. Mm -hmm. Why are you feel you're a 10? Because that means you just got it going on. And if you're at a one or two or whatever, why would you rate yourself at that? What What are the reasons so that we can hear that and we can dialogue about and that? And then I'm changing your, the last Go for one it. Up. Oh, you're changing uh, the yes, second question? Yes. All right, so let's, here's, here's a question. Mama's changing it. Go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry. He's now, got it. Go ahead. Okay. Then what do you need to do in order to better communicate? with your people in your relationships what areas do you need to work on and why do you need to work on those areas we so talked, the things we talked about in the series yes yes what areas do you feel that that you just talked about that you may you felt you're doing good and now what areas are you not doing good on and that you feel you need to work on in order to fortify your relationships even more and in the last teaching so small group leader make sure you help people out the last teaching on communication we did we talked about positive communication and negative communication so let's revert refer to that to help people in answering this question these are good questions yeah good questions let's be transparent all right we got to go man we got to move on we got to roll but we love being with y'all during this time yes. it's a chance to review and summarize and it's awesome we love y'all so love much you. man again small group leader thank you for all that you've done this year we're excited about what we're ready to do going into 2021 well we always say this way man <laughs> there's victory only one place in the universe no matter where you look high low sideways side eye only one place. Where is that, Mama? In Christ Jesus. Be blessed. Be blessed.